Well, hello, Xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. Today, I'm going to show you one of the nicest and one of the best value vintage lenses you can buy. It's from a family of lenses that I've heard a lot about, but never actually used until now. I'm talking about the Hexanons from Konica. Konica was a major player in the film days, but they didn't seem to survive the transition to digital too well, and I'm not sure they're involved in photography at all anymore. But their legacy continues in the shape of the Hexanon and the less expensive Hexar lines of lenses. The lens we're going to look at today is a rather nice one, the Hexanon 40mm f1.8. I've only ever used one of the 40mm lens, the Voigtlander 40mm f1.4 I reviewed a few episodes ago and it's a beautiful little thing with lovely optics and I really liked its focal length. There's something about a 40mm lens that makes it perfect for street shooting. Not quite so wide as a 35, but not so tight as a 50mm. The Hexanon 40mm from Konica is a lot less expensive than the Voigtlander. You can pick up a good Hexanon from 30 to 40 pounds, but is it as good? Stay tuned to find out. Well, I have to say right from the start, this is a really nice little lens that can make some very special images. It's such a tiny little thing too. It's smaller than the Hexanon 55mm f1.7. It's smaller than the Hexanon 28mm f2.8. And it's only slightly bigger than the Jupiter 8 50mm rangefinder lens. A tiny lens indeed. The short flange distance of the Konica system means that adapters for mirrorless cameras are short too. It sits really nicely on the Sony a7. Unlike some lenses, it doesn't protrude too much. It looks natural, almost as though it was made for the camera. Together, they make a light and compact setup. It sits very nicely on a film body too. Here it is on the Konica FS1, a really nice little SLR from, I think, the late 70s. And I think that for film street photography, you'd have to go a long way to beat this combination of camera and lens. It's a well-made lens, although as it's very light, I think there must be quite a bit of plastic used in its construction. That's not necessarily a bad thing, of course. This one's been well used, but it stood the test of time and it's still in good condition. The focus ring's silky smooth and it turns nice and cleanly with a minimum focus distance of 45 centimeters. The focus throw is almost 180 degrees and that's a lot more than the 60 degrees of the Voigtlander lens, but it wasn't a problem in use. The aperture's in good condition too. It turns just as it should, and apertures run from f1.8 to f22. The Hexanon lenses are well known for their ability to represent colors, and judging by my experience with this one, that reputation is entirely justified. I love the colors it makes. They're not super saturated, but they're not muted either. They fall somewhere between those extremes. Much of its character, I think, comes from the way it delineates and foregrounds colours. It makes each colour stand out, and it doesn't seem to favour any one colour over another. It gives them all equal treatment. They kind of radiate. It gives each colour a subtle luminosity and a power. Each becomes strong and bold in its own right, but the result is never overpowering as it might be with some lenses that boost colours more. It's quite an unusual rendering and in some shots, if the light's right, it gives almost a look of a sort of a chrome colour film. 
It's quite a unique look and a very pleasing one too. The Voigtlander renders colours beautifully as well in a very similar way to the Konica. This lens too gives us colours that are neither over nor undersaturated but just about right. Colours have a lightness and a brightness that many other lenses just don't. Colours from both these lenses are actually quite similar. Not identical for sure, but with a very similar feel. The Voigtlander is a little warmer than the Konica. Its colours are pushed slightly towards the red end of the spectrum, while the Konica pushes its colours towards the blue. That said, the difference is small, and images from both lenses do feel fairly similar. Just like the Konica, the Voigtlander gives colours that aren't realistic as such. They both transform and modulate colour, but they do it very subtly. Saturations boosted just a little, colours are prominent and energetic, but never too much so. And through both these lenses, the world is a more vibrant and a more beautiful place. The Konica's a nicely sharp lens, and if you can nail focus accurately, it delineates and separates the subject very clearly. And because it's a reasonably fastish 40mm, it'll give some background blur at closer distances, helping to draw the eye to the subject. For me, this is a street lens, so blur isn't the first priority, but it is there if you want it. It has a nice character and it really helps to set up a street portrait in a way that a 28mm or even a 35mm lens couldn't do to the same degree. It's not the sharpest lens I've ever used. It's not quite up to Carl Zeiss Jena Pancola levels of sharpness, for example, but it really isn't far off and it certainly never looks soft. And although the Voigtlander is also a very sharp lens, I don't think it's any sharper than the Konica. In fact, if there is a difference, I think the Konica might just have the edge here. It's difficult to say with absolute scientific accuracy without shooting a test chart, and I'm not really sure where that would get us. What we can say for sure though, is that in real world photography, it's difficult to put a hair between them. I think the Voigtlander wins on background blur though. It's that bit better controlled, that bit smoother and just that little bit nicer too. Again, there isn't much in it and again, it's not the first priority if you're shooting on the street. Nevertheless, the Voigtlander does come out slightly ahead for quality of background blur. The Konica's a very contrasty lens and it makes strong and punchy images. It's not over contrasty though, instead it sits nicely between the two. And those engineers and designers back in the 70s must really have known their stuff because the coatings on this lens resist flaring and loss of contrast very effectively. Like any lens, It'll lose some contrast if it catches light at the wrong angle, but even under extreme conditions it doesn't lose too much, and when it flares it makes blue reflections, which personally I rather like. If that's not your cup of tea though, it can be easily reduced by using a lens hood. And again, the Voigtlander gives a similar performance. It's contrasty but not too contrasty. It also achieves a very nice balance between the two poles. It resists contrast loss better than the Konica though, a testament to its more modern coatings. One area where the Voigtlander does seem to suffer though is the darkness of its corners when it's shot fully open. They really are pretty dark and the Konica is clearly quite a bit better in this respect. Dark corners aren't necessarily a bad thing of course, and the Voigtlander does have a slightly wider aperture than the Konica, f1.4 as against f1.8. Stopping down will reduce the effect, but at the sacrifice of some background blur. 
So, two beautiful little lenses. One from a recent rangefinder, the other from a late 70s SLR. They're both sharp with great colours and they both make beautiful images. Personally, I prefer the colours from the Konica, but that's down to personal taste, so I can't really award a win here. The Konica has a closer minimum focus distance, 45 centimeters, as against the Voigtlander, 70 centimeters, but the Voigtlander has that beautiful short focus throw of 60 degrees compared to the Konica's 180, so focusing is quite a bit quicker. The Voigtlander is more nicely engineered, while the Konica is a little bit lighter and more plasticky. The youngest Konica is around 40 years old, and any lens you buy could have faults from internal dust and fungus to general wear, tear and tiredness. The Voigtlander is a very recent lens, and I think it's still in production, and even if you buy a second-hand one, you can expect a lot less wear and tear. As for which one you should buy, well, if you appreciate beautiful engineering and you can afford it, consider a Voigtlander at around £400. If all you want is an outstanding street lens, the Konica at around £40 is the obvious candidate. Both lenses make high quality, beautiful images, but personally, I have to say, I prefer the images from the Konica. I like its slightly cooler tones and I love what it does with colour. And I much prefer its price too. So, that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to support it and help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon for some more xenography.